Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, we're gonna mix things up just a little bit. We've got a 1995 Acura Integra in the shop today. Well, I guess it's not in the shop, it's outside of the shop, but that's fine. And for today's video, I'm gonna rebuild the distributor and show you all how to do that. So, yeah, let's hop right into it. I'll begin by removing the three screws that hold the distributor cap onto the distributor body. I'm using my Phillips head bit here, but you can also use an eight millimeter socket. Removing the cap, I'm gonna inspect the points inside of the distributor cap. These are pretty corroded. You can see there is a fuzzy buildup on each one of these. Now I could just clean this off, but instead I'll be replacing this. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. Next, I'm gonna remove the rotor with a number two Phillips screwdriver and pop the rotor off. Then I'm going to remove the coil, starting by disconnecting this wire using a number two screwdriver. Why I grabbed a different one here, I have no idea. <laughs> then I'm going to label this wire. I'm not too concerned about mixing them up, but there'll be quite a bit of time in between when I take this apart and when I put it back together. So better safe than sorry while I wait for all my rebuild parts. Okay, and now for the other wire. The head of the screw was stripped, so I had to remove it with vice grips, and I'll definitely be replacing the screw later on for sure and labeling this one as our negative lead. Now I'm gonna remove these two mounting screws that hold the coil in place on the distributor housing. Next, I'm going to begin removing the igniter, and in order to do that, I need to disconnect these wires, then removing these two screws to pull the igniter out. Oops, should have disconnected that wire first. And now I'm gonna remove this first magnet, but it's not gonna be able to come out just yet because it's all part of the same harness, so bear with me here for a sec. And actually, since I'm gonna remove that wire harness soon, I'll go ahead and remove this little distributor cap seal right now too and get that out of the way. And I'm gonna remove this little bracket and snake this wire harness out of the way and pull up on the wires here just to give us a little bit of tension that maybe will make it easier to get that center piece out of here. And now removing these last three screws that hold the center portion into place. And now on the flip side, I'm gonna have to remove this C-clip. It's a little bit tricky, so be patient. And then I'm gonna remove this little dowel pin and slide off this keyway with its washers. You might have several shims or washers here, so don't lose them. Also, I am marking the side of the shaft that the keyway side with the slit in it was. I'm not 100% sure, but this looks like it should only be installed one way, so I'll just be sure to keep it facing the same direction. Flipping the distributor back over, I'm now able to pull out the guts. There's that piece. And now looking in the distributor housing, we can see our two other magnets and that dreaded seal that always starts to leak over time that causes people to have to replace these things. Also, look at the wear on the tips of all three of these magnets. I'm gonna have to remove these so that I can clean the distributor housing body and also so that I can clean off these really well. And now to pop out that seal in the bottom there using this flathead screwdriver that I bent and flipping the distributor over one last time to remove this O-ring on the back side. All right, so now that the housing is super clean, time to replace the seal. I start by coating the exterior of the seal in aviation forma gasket, then I push it in place with my fingers first, then I use the backside of a 17 millimeter socket to hammer the seal in flush with the body. Now, installation is pretty much just a reverse removal, but I'll walk you through the process, starting with the magnets and the electrical components getting installed in the same way they were removed. You can see how clean they are and the tips are nice and shiny now. I took some electrical parts cleaner and scotch right to them and got all the corrosion off. All right, so they're the first two installed and now for the center shaft. After the center shaft is in place, I can fasten down that last magnet with those two screws, as well as install those three shaft plate screws. Now flipping the distributor over to install the washers, coating them with a little bit of grease before install, then placing the key back onto the shaft with the side with the groove of it facing the side with my paint mark. Also, this pin only goes in one way, so just make sure if you can't get in one way, just put it in the other way. Then keeping that pin installed with the circlip, then after it's installed, just rotating that shaft and making sure that it spins freely, but that you can also feel the pull of those magnets so it's gonna feel a little bit notchy when you turn it. Next, I'm gonna install the igniter, and to do that, I'll first feed the wire through this opening here with my 90 degree pick, then installing the igniter with the two screws, making sure not to forget that one of these has that little wire holding clip with it. And you can see me plug in the wire harness in the proper positions here on the igniter. We've got three. Next, you can recall that at the beginning of this video, the coil was not good. So here's my brand new OEM Honda coil that I found on eBay. Installing it with these two longer Phillips screws, then connecting the positive and the negative wires to the coil. 
Now here's my new distributor cap seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit that into the groove here in the distributor housing body. Then flipping the distributor over and here is my O-ring seal that I'm also installing. Then I'm reinstalling the harness bracket on the side of the housing body and make sure that the wires are routed properly. Now for my last and final step, I'm installing a brand new cap and rotor that I also found on eBay. I'm using a little anesthese here for this screw because it has a little bit of corrosion on it and I don't want it to seize in there for future services. After installing the cap, hopefully this goes without saying, but be sure not to over tighten these bolts. It's plastic and they're going into aluminum that we're working with here, so low torque for sure. And there we go. There's a complete teardown and rebuild of this distributor for this 1995 Acura Integra. Now let's get this thing installed. All right, so I just went ahead and labeled the new one based off of the old one, since it obviously worked just fine. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this oil here and just like lubricate that O-ring with it so that we know that this O-ring is uh, not gonna rip or tear while I'm installing it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit of this mess though. All that. I'm just sort of looking at where um, this keyway is going to sit in there on the camshaft. I'm just going to try to get it to line up. I'm going to get it as close as possible. And I'm installing it. Wow! I wasn't expecting to get it that close. That's pretty. Wow, all right. I'll take it. And I'm going to leave these loose because we still have to time the engine. Right. Definitely gonna, definitely gonna replace these, but I'm gonna do that a little bit later. All right, now I'm gonna fire it up and get the timing light on it. Heck yeah, so that was a major success. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, awesome. But more importantly, if you used this tutorial to rebuild your own distributor and it was a massive success, fantastic. Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing that. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.